Okay, look, okay. this is part two of the character creation series in Blender. As you saw on the last part, I separated the scalp and now I'm creating some vertex groups for that scalp so I can divide the hair room into different sections. I like doing this because I like having better control of all the particle systems. Once I start dividing it by sections, like the top part, the nape, the middle, and the sides, and also the baby hairs in the front. This step is optional, you don't have to do it because you can just add the particles by hand, like one by one, but if you want to do the interpolated and just add the random hair strands, you can use this to better organize those sections. I also like adding a hair material using the principal hair node, just so I can have a base material that I can preview while I'm grooming the hair. Once I'm done adding the material, I go ahead and start my first particle system, and I adjust the hair strand shape and also mess around with the hair length, the segments, and I go ahead and add my hair material and move the hair strand steps to a higher value and activate the spline. When I'm starting out a new hair system, I like having the emission number to be a very low number just so I can control it better. Or I like just making a zero and then adding the strands manually on the particle edit. Once I'm on particle edit mode and I started grooming the hair strands, I like to select the roots and then subdivide them uh, so I can have more resolution on the root area and I can bring those roots up so I can look a little bit more natural. When I'm grooming hair with the old particle system, I like using VFX Grace add-on because they have so many additional tools in the particle edit tab. So keep that in mind if you see so many tools that are different here. It's not just the vanilla blender. And one thing I love about this add-on is that they have this modifier option in which you can add clump, noise, and length, something like that. So here I'm using the clump option and the noise option, and I am clumping the hair strength on the root and on the tip of the hair strengths, and I'm also adding some sort of a wave or a curl. Right now it's looking like a founding father's wig, but trust the process, it's gonna look a little bit better at the end of this video. I go back and forth with adjusting the diameter root and the tip and also um, the children. Interpolation, usually I go back and forth between simple and interpolated. I usually like simple because, I don't know, it's simpler than the interpolated when you're doing interpolation. You have to have strengths in the middle. If you're doing um, animation, it comes in handy, but if you're just doing still renders, I like simple because you can just do the room on the top. Here I am adding more strength so I can unify that top part of the hair room and I am subdividing the root to add more resolution and I am fixing those hair strengths and bringing them up so they fall in a more natural way. I am adding more strengths over here as well just so I can have that hairline to be closer to each other like a regular human head would. Hair grooming in any 3D program is a very long and tedious process but with the help of a podcast and some music you can get through this but there's just so you know there's a lot of back and forth with adding strengths and um, modifying those parameters for the modifier if you're using that vfx grace or you're just using the regular vanilla blender and just adjusting the clump curve and things like that a lot of patience is needed here i am adding more strengths at the top so i can bring those two parts together a little bit closer. You can do this with like interpolation and then just do a mask and have a parting mask. I've shown different processes on like using the regen add-on which you can use a parting mask. But as you can see here, bringing those two together makes it look so much better than it looked before because now it looks, it's starting to look a little bit more natural. I'm still messing around with the curl, adding noise, messing around with the length. And once I go ahead and add the middle part, which is what I'm doing right now, you're going to see the look of the hair to start coming together because that extra, those extra strengths are going to add so much more volume to the hair room and they're going to bring the look together. The process stays the same. I usually keep the emission at zero and then I add the strengths in the particle edit tab so I can have more control over the groom. I subdivide the roots by selecting them and pressing control plus so I can Add an extra key and then I subdivide it like that and then I just continue combing those strengths in a way in which they fall naturally. Once I'm happy with the overall look of the groom, I go into the shader tab and then I start modifying my hair shader. I like adding a color ramp and I input curve info and I use random or 
or end strand or intercept as the factor and I use it for the tint or I use it for the color if I'm not using melanin concentration but I'm using the other option which is direct coloring I believe. Uh, so I like playing around and exploring a bunch of different colors but when I'm doing hair I like doing crazy funky colors and you're going to be able to see that um, a little bit more forward and also I like going around the hair and then seeing how it's looking in all of the different aspects around turning around a whole 360. Here I'm adding a emission light which is from that other video that I showed you guys my favorite trick of adding lights. This is just a circle plane with an emission node and it's under the light uh, collection and click that's indirect and then I disable the shadow. If you've been here you saw how I did it and then I add any other different lights so I can better see the hair and see how the light bounces around the hair. Uh, and then I do a little bit of test renders. You're gonna see, yeah, this is like the ADHD in me. I go ahead and change a whole different things and then I go ahead and change the skin tone and I make it a little bit more dark. And I'm gonna show you that later on. I'm gonna explain how I did it, I'm not sure. And then I go back and add the baby hair because that's just how my brain works. I start doing something and then I do something completely different. Yeah, I like doing test renders seeing how the hair looks a bunch of them literally a whole different colors and um, just see what i'm happy with and what the character kind of looks better with yeah i play around with a lot of parameters i duplicate things oh something that i forgot to mention is in the hair particle system when i'm creating a different one i don't start from scratch i just duplicate the one that i already did and then just change that one so i forgot to mention that and here you see me. I saw this wig on Pinterest that had like stripe um, colors and I wanted to recreate this in blue but it did not fit the character at all so I kind of just I saved it for the future because who knows if I'm going to use it and maybe in different colors and then I added a hue with saturation valley node and then I was playing around with all the colors so that's one thing that I love about blender you can do so many different things. Here's where I'm changing the skin color. I'm adding a color ramp uh, for the color and a color ramp for the factor and using a mix node in mix or add. I'm not sure, I don't remember, but I'm using that to mix a little bit of a darker tone just so I can have the option to have a darker skin model if that's what I like. Because I think for this model, I ended up trying also a ginger hair color and I think it looked better with a more tan, a darker skin tone. So I kind of kept it as another file and I saved it. And that's usually the one that I like using because it looks so much better. And I go ahead and copy that color ramp with the color mix into all of the other shaders. So that's a simple trick if you want to change the skin color on a model that you already have. You can just add that and change the color on the model. And look, it looks somewhat natural, it looks fine doesn't look that crazy. I think I went back and adjusted the um, subsurface because there's a lot of it right here so I ended up changing that in the skin anyways but as you can see the ginger color looks so much better with like a darker skin tone in my opinion before you you know. I don't think I stuck with the ginger hair though but I used the color ramp from that brown to mix it with another one and then I added it onto that brown shader that I had so I can have a bunch of different mixes of colors so it could look more natural when the light is hitting it and as you can see the brown looks so much more realistic when I'm adding two different color ramps and mixing them and using the random input from the curve input node to control those things. After messing around with the color, I go back into the hair groom and add some more hairs around the nape area. And I did this by duplicating the first particle system and then just making it a single user system, I believe that's what it's called. And then I go ahead and add more strengths in the particle system tab. I go ahead and subdivide the root, the same thing that I did before, and then I go ahead and comb those strengths. The last part of this hair groom is adding the hairline so I can unify that whole look and make it look a little bit more natural. 
take a shot every time I sit a little bit. I go ahead and do the same thing to duplicate the particle system and then I add the strengths, make them a little bit shorter and then I groom them uh, like baby hairs will grow out of the head. It's pretty much simple, self-explanatory. And then I go and readjust the clump and also all of the other parameters, I think I delete them and then start from scratch so I can have a different, more fine baby hair look. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I think the last part of this series is doing makeup in Blender because I did a different video where I showed how I did makeup using Substance Painter and people wanted to know if we could do the same thing in Blender and you can. So I'm gonna try and find that recording because I think I recorded it. If not, I'm starting all over again and doing a different one and I will show you guys how I did that. Thank you so much again. <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm not sure. I think I was checking actually the color of the tongue in the rig. I don't know why this clip is included, but I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, I don't know, do all the things YouTubers ask for.